This is Evolution Simulation Game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. It lets you design your own plants and animals, put them in an ecosystem together and see how they evolve. This is the fourth video in a series of six weekly devlogs to show you the next big update I am currently working on. I used to think that in video games, content is much more important than visuals. A bad looking game with awesome gameplay can still be a good purchase, an awesome looking game with bad gameplay can never be, was my reasoning. Substance over style. While this might be true, it's not the whole story. I believe that 99% of all the bad looking games with awesome gameplay are still out there and unknown to me and the general public, and will always be. This is because, as much as I try not to, I still judge a game by its proverbial cover. Not because I want to, but in the first few moments it's all I have. In other words, if there's nothing about a game that looks good, chances are small I will ever try to learn more about the gameplay. That it also works this way for other people is something I see in every single piece of promotion I release for this game. The more eye candy, the more people show interest. This means that, if I want other people to discover my project, I can't afford to only think about features that would be cool additions to the simulation. I also have to take into account whether they will look good, or nobody will ever know about them. Don't get me wrong, a game that is a shiny but hollow shell would be my worst nightmare, but spending thousands of hours on a project that no one will ever play is not a very happy dream either. For this reason I have adopted the working backwards methodology developed at Amazon. In my case this means that I start with specifying what I want the trailer to look like, scene for scene. Then I add the features to make each scene real, so I can actually record it. So in September last year I was thinking, what would be really cool in my next trailer? My answer was a suggestion that has been done numerous times. Flying. Okay, working backwards, how did flight evolve? Turns out, scientists are not sure. Option 1 is that it evolved in animals that jump while running away from a predator, or predators that jump onto prey. Option 2 is that it evolved from animals that glide from tree to tree. While I want to more or less support both theories, I'm focusing on the latter because it's so nice and gradual. So, working backward from there, what do you need to jump from tree to tree? Being able to sit in trees in the first place. For every new plant, the game now identifies if there would be any sittable places, which you can also visualize. Furthermore, animals need to be able to climb. I've added a number of new limbs that give animals climbing abilities. If not too heavy, of course. Animals now also have weight, depending on their body parts and torso, and all legs have a maximum weight they can carry for walking, climbing or anything else. So if you want this animal to be able to climb, it will need to lose these antlers. Or if you want to build this fat animal for a cold climate, it will need to have legs that can carry the weight. This, by the way, is a second solution to the problem that you could just add multiple mouths to a creature to make sure that it could always eat everything. Extra mouths now mean extra weight to carry around. Showing animals sitting in trees is more complex than it may initially seem because plants and trees actually move in the wind. And if a plant moves, any animals sitting in it have to move as well. See, the movement of a plant is controlled by a so-called bone that moves back and forth. The higher a vertex in the plant, the more it is influenced by this bone. Right now, my approach is to have animals influenced by this tree bone as soon as they enter the tree. Unlike the tree, however, they are influenced by the bone as a whole, so they don't change shape. As soon as they leave the tree again, the bone stops influencing them. The main advantage of sitting in trees for an animal is that you are out of reach for predators who cannot climb. What would be even better is of course being able to stay up in the trees forever, jumping or gliding from tree to tree. To achieve that, animals can evolve a membrane between their fingers or between one finger and their arm. Or, when they are feathered, have extra feathers on their arms. This is most advantageous when there are large plants with branches to sit on, but gliding animals also have an advantage even without them. Speed. Both these glider arms and climbing hands, as well as new walking legs, add something to the game that I did not really have to worry about before. Child game objects, like nails and membrane. So far, a leg was just a leg to be merged with the main body, but now all of these extra things have to be added, positioned correctly, and respond correctly to the bones when animated. This took me many days to get right. This then brings me to full powered flight. Powered flight has independently evolved at least four times on Earth, and in all of these cases was wildly successful, judging by the number of species it gave rise to. In vertebrates, flight has evolved in bats, birds and pterosaurs, all of which wing types have an equivalent in the game, as you can see. So, now you know this, I can finally reveal the name of this update. The fight and flight update. 
Unlike in real life, flight initially was a huge disadvantage in the simulation. After some investigation, this turned out to be related to their speed. Flying is by far the fastest way to move around, and this meant flying animals constantly accidentally entered areas that were too cold or too warm for them and died. To fix this, the instinct system now has been further extended so animals can feel the cold and heat and respond to it. Instincts are really important for flying animals in general, because without them they might fly away from areas with food as well. Even more so than for climbing and gliding animals, for flying animals weight plays an important role, as they will only fly when they are really lightweight. To help with this, I added a number of extra lightweight legs. This one with more attack power, and this one with more speed when walking. Flight means I had to add a third location, besides on the ground and in a tree. In the air. Similar to how adding the tree location led to the challenge with trees moving in the wind, adding the air location meant I had to figure out what to do with animals that wanted to stay on one spot but in the air. A bird just hovering in one location in the air looks really unnatural, even if flapping its wings. The solution in the end was to have the birds fly around in an H-shaped pattern. So in the underlying simulation, flying animals work exactly as walking animals. They stay in one location for some time, then move to another spot, stay there again for some time, etc. But for flying animals you do not really notice this, because they also fly around in place. And so, players can finally spread their wings. And I have the eye candy I needed. If this video made you want to try it again, you can. It is currently available in early access on Steam and H. See the links below for more information. Keep in mind though that what you just saw in this video will be part of the next big update, which is currently planned for June 15. If you want to follow development, there is a Twitter and a newsletter. And you might also be interested in other videos on this channel, like the one where I run the simulation for 7 days straight, or the trailer for the previous flower update.